Good morning, everyone. My name is Narin Sa, and uh, you are watching uh, Metro Rail News. Today, uh, we have with us Mr. Lin Hon Fung and Mr. Monis More, and uh, uh, for an exclusive uh, media interview uh, in our studio. Before going forward, uh, I would like to share some of their achievement and uh, their contribution in this industry. So uh, let's begin with uh, Mr. Fung. So Mr. Fung is a Managing Director at Stratus uh, Asia South. Uh, he has a wealth of experience in the field of uh, information technology, uh, operational technology and uh, technology enabled services. Uh, he has a proven track record of successfully businesses in Asia Pacific region uh, with a strong background in uh, profit and loss management, uh, global account management, direct sales, channel development, uh, and go to market strategy education. Uh, Mr. Fung's uh, vast knowledge and skills make him a valuable asset in the driving business. Uh, growth and delivering uh, outstanding results. So starting from an uh, inventory engineer uh, to managing director, how has your uh, experience been? Good morning, uh, Raghendra. Our experience has been certainly very exciting, right? you know, especially how I was uh, put in a position starting off with uh, as an inventory engineer. So that's a role where I'm tasked to look into uh, what are the available inventory in the network operator, right? Typical large mobile operator, uh, where I'm tasked to look at optimizing the network availability. So, and, and I move along from there, helping different enterprises, firstly, to fix things. I think I'm known to help organization fix uh, and resolve issues. So from, from the first role to the second role, joining an IT company, uh, again, I'm tasked with many different challenges uh, uh, to actually help the organization to solve PNL issues, to solve uh, customer expectation issue, customer experience issues. Um, I, I think it's really amazing, right? Um, starting off from a country role, uh, way back in Malaysia, uh, into Asia Pacific role, right? Uh, I think it's something that you know, has given me a lot of opportunity to be exposed to different countries, um, including India, right? Uh, it's been, and now I'm in Stratus itself, um, going into the operations technology space helping different manufacturing plants, uh, industrial automation uh, users to solve their automation issues. So it's been really, really exciting. And life has never been, you know, uh, so-called, uh, how would I say, enriching along the journey. Yeah. So uh, now let's talk about uh, Mr. Uh, Maurice More. Uh, Mr. Maurice More uh, served as a country sales director at Strat India. Uh, he has... Uh, he is a uh, seasoned uh, sales and marketing uh, veteran with over 20 years of experience in operation technology, technology-enabled services, and IT industry. He specializes in hardware software solutions and has a strong track record in sectors like oil and gas, uh, chemical, pharma, public sector, metals, and IT and transportation uh, with expertise uh, in global accounts uh, management, direct sales, and uh, go-to-market strategy. Mr. More has successfully grown business in the India and uh, neighboring countries. So uh, now, without delay, uh, let's begin with the discussion. What does Strat do? And uh, what is your specialization? And how do you use it for uh, different uh, services and sectors. Okay, so let me take this question, uh, Nagendra. So first of all, Stratus, um, what we do is we help our end user to prevent downtime before a downtime happens. So that's really what we do, right? How do we do it, right? We provide a set of mission critical infrastructure, uh, compute infrastructure uh, to help our client to achieve that. Now, um, it is usually uh, what we, I mean, uh, technology that's what we call fault tolerant. So fault tolerant technology that allow an end user to experience a 
99.999% uptime. So that's what we do. Now, what industry do we play in? We play in many, many different industries. So um, in India, right, we started off in the uh, banking sector, in the capital market sector. Um, one of our largest customers here is actually National Stock Exchange. And of course, uh, outside India, we have a lot of other customers as well in that sector, right? We have uh, stock exchanges in different countries. Uh, in Asia Pacific, we have securities firms using our technologies in different countries, as well as uh, we have um, clearing houses, uh, commodity exchanges using our technology as well. So there's a big chunk of our business. Now, the other chunk of business we play in is also in the various industry. So oil and gas, for example, right? So we help out uh, end users in the oil and gas industry in the upstream uh, sector, in the midstream sector, as well as the downstream sector, where the end products of the oil and gas are, are products are being distributed to maybe consumers or even to different industries and so on. And then, of course, coming to transportation itself, uh, we are really well adopted uh, in a lot of countries in this region, in Asia South, right, where we are being used for visionary critical uh, environment, including signaling systems, including the building management solutions uh, for the different stations that is uh, uh, being built, right, to operate. Um, also including things like uh, solutions like, um, um, how to say, um, uh, door screen Proof, uh, control systems as well, right? So with video surveillance systems in the real uh, industry. So that's the kind of uh, um, systems that we help power because these are systems that are mission critical and it should not actually uh, be interrupted at any point in time during the service of the transportation. So that's Stratus in a summary. Yeah. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, so uh, mobility, uh, mobility landscape is uh, changing very uh, rapidly. Right. Uh, with rapid urbanization, cities uh, need sustainable uh, transport options for uh, their people. Right. Uh, how, uh, how are you helping in this regard? Sure. I mean, first of all, I think mobility, uh, so-called uh, landscape, is definitely changing very rapidly, be it from a uh, real industry or in the air industry and in the sea industry. And these are the different sectors within the mobility uh, industries that we are also uh, helping our customer in, right? Now, very particular in, uh, and, and instructors, we look at sustainability in two aspects, right? One aspect is really about the greenhouse emission, right? So that's really a bigger agenda of, of sustainability. But the other aspect of sustainability we look at is also about how the, the rail systems is able to cope with the ever-growing demand of the passengers. Like, you know, com coming from single lines to multiple lines of metros being built up, um, having a, a metro systems that cater for um, hundreds of uh, commuters per day to millions of commuters per day. And that is about scalability. So that is also a part of a so-called aspect of how we look at sustainability as a whole as well, right? Now, instructors, right, um, uh, we, our systems from a supply perspective, right, um, is built with optimized environment that we have commitment to reduce our our carbon emission by 2030, right? And, and that is really coming from a supply perspective. So for every uh, system that is being adopted out there in the in the metro world, right? Uh, at least in the process of producing the equipment that is being supplied, uh, we are delivering our commitment when it comes to sustainability. And of course, coming to the second aspect of sustainability from scalability wise, right? Um, we are also uh, providing systems that are highly scalable to cater for the ever-growing um, ridership, ever-growing demand of the systems that the rail sector is having. So that is really from a global perspective of, of, of the land, uh, changing landscape in uh, mobility itself. So, yeah. Maybe I'll get uh, Mr. Moray to, to add on his perspective in Indian market as well. Yeah. From Indian perspective, you know, Indian government is committed to reduce the emission intensity. So they have com they have a commitment of reducing it by 45% uh, of what it was to the 2005 levels, and uh, even in transportation segment, you know there is there is an commitment from Indian government to reduce the emission by 33%. So in that context, the Indian government is taking steps so that uh, you know instead of uh, the road, the rail freight uh, is encouraged, and uh, they want to bring the rail freight. Uh, from presently 35% of the total freight uh, that India is catering to uh, 
45 percent so by two thousand yeah, by 2030 so that so that the emissions are reduced so in that context uh, what lino said in terms of what we are doing you know to bring it a sustainable a sustainable uh, you know re reduce the emissions so it's in in line with what indian government has also planned so when when we are saying uh, what stratus does you know so if if you are reducing you're keeping your lines up and uh, running all the time you know, uh, it, it helps uh, to reduce the f uh, fuel consumption of the you know transport, and in terms, it also helps uh, the maintenance uh, to be reduced. So uh, you know, in a way, it helps to reduce the emission, and so you know, we are helping the global and the Indian cause at the same time with by doing so. Okay. So uh, what is always on uh, computing solutions, a term uh, globally associated with starts. And uh, is this is the technology uh, an add-on for Industry 4.0? Mm. Uh, what are uh, major benefit of technology uh, for mobility sector, especially uh, metro and uh, railways? So yeah, I think yeah, I'll I'll take this. So so basically, uh, see, always on is uh, you know business continuity, and uh, you know you have to have a continuous business continuity and uh, uh, data integrity so it's true for all the businesses and in stratus we are proud you know we have been uh, associated with always on you know helping the our customers to have a business continuity and data integrity for last 40 years and almost uh, last 40 years globally and almost uh, half uh, one and a half decade uh, in india so you know just to give you an example uh, you know in in financial services uh, you cannot have any transaction being missed you know it's very critical you know uh, yeah so you cannot have any transaction being missed so we have our uh, systems running in national stock exchange so you know how critical it is so you cannot have uh, you know, a moment of uh, downtime uh, there so so that is how critical it is so as per you know our one of the major mission that we see in stratus is to uh, have the highest level of uptime and for the mission critical applications that uh, the customer has and enrich the customer experience and you know have no uh, no interruption in in what experience uh, you know they, they get so uh, coming to from financial services even if you see manufacturing or the industry you know if there is a moment of failure it can cause a batch of drug like in pharma or a batch of complete steel tons of steel coil you know being completely spoiled and you know the production loss happening so it's very critical for such mission critical application to be always on and you know there no downtime is expected in the industry now so, so coming to uh, transportation similarly you know you cannot have any downtime in transportation and and it's not expected the customer doesn't you know want uh, uh, everyone is running on their toes you know to reach their destination and even the operators want their system to be up and running all the time so the always on is been there and we are very proud to be associated uh, with it so this Coming to the second part of the question, how uh, always on and IoT, you know, what what it brings to the IO, IOT 4.0. Industry 4.0. 4.0, yeah. So basically, industry 4.0 is, you know, all uh, the data integration, collection of data and making it into a useful information for the customers or your service providers. So, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, when, when we say always on system, so when you get data, so if it if it is a moment of failure of data, that data will not make sense for that particular you know transaction or what is happening. So you have to be you know always on in the IoT environment to get a proper analytics and make the rightful use of the information that is available from the IoT. So with the sensors or you know the various equipments, yeah. So what brings the information if you are not making it in a real time use, then it's of no use to the you know customer world. so that's how you know uh, always on is enhancing the iot and you know bringing the best of the iot and making you know so that iot is used to its fullest so moving to my next question is an edge uh, computing platform uh, similar to big data analytics and uh, what is fault uh, tolerance system in what ways uh, this technology 
are helping rail operators in modern times? Why don't I take this question out, right? So, so first of all, um, not many people may know when we mention about edge computing, right? So edge computing essentially is a paradigm shift where uh, some of the workload is being um, uh, moved outside data center to the environment that is nearer to where the activities are being generated. So for example, in a, in a railway uh, environment, right? Um, the compute systems are being moved away from the centralized data center to maybe the stations, maybe to nearer to where the tracks are actually happening, right? Where data is actually being collected, processed, and uh, even um, provide informed decision on, on real-time basis to uh, allow the train operator or the stations operator to make a, a prompt decision uh, as quickly as the data is actually providing them. So that is really a concept of edge computing. Now, how is this complementing big data? So big data is all about data, right? It's about how to make, uh, collect, make good use of the information that is being picked up from various data sources, be it from sensors, be it from IoT devices, be it from information that you gather on the ground, right? And the question is, where do you process this information? So in the past, a lot of that such information is being processed centrally or in the cloud, right? In the data center or in the cloud. But with the demand of um, more real-time information being, um, being processed, at, on the spot of where data is being generated, that's where edge computing comes in, right? It allows a lot more immediate uh, processing of information, gathering of information, more immediate real-time decisions to be made there and then where the information, that where the activity is being, uh, is being happening or executed, right? So that is really the, diff uh, I mean, the, the how big data complement, or rather edge computing complement into big data analysis. And it's getting more and more important why, because, um, in the past, um, big data would really work with a uh, environment where you have good network connectivity from where the information is being uh, derived to the actual uh, 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 environment where the data, data is being processed. Now, uh, with more and more data being generated, the bandwidth needed for that uh, data transfer is actually increasing. Now, with the introduction of edge computing, that's where the bandwidth can be optimized. Now you can start processing more information at the edge, providing only critical information up to the big data uh, systems, and then you actually save a lot on, on bandwidth. You're no longer dependent on the, on the availability of the bandwidth itself. And if I can add on, uh, how is fault tolerance related to big data and how is fault tolerance related to edge computing, right? So that's the second part of your question. So, so the thing is this, what we notice is that in the edge environment, which is outside data center, Right. Typically, you don't really see an IT resource commonly in, in a rail station. Right? Do you really see deploy an IT person to a railway station? Not really. Do you actually deploy an, I, an IT person into the uh, uh, command center in, in, a, in, a, in a network operator environment? Yes and no. Depends on the network operator. Right? Now, that is really where the importance of fault tolerant technology comes in. Right? So if you have a fault tolerant technology in the edge environment that can take care of the availability of the compute in the edge, um, you no longer need a lot of IT skills to take care of that. Yeah, so um, I mean, in the traditional way of operating where you deploy standard uh, compute environment, you will need to deploy an IT person into the site to in the event of any hardware failure or any uh, equipment failure. Right? But with fault tolerant technology coming from Stratus, right, you no longer need to do that because all our technologies are quite hot pluckable, right? uh, self recover and it's actually very autonomous, autonomous for operator to run. So that's really why fault tolerance uh, technology in the edge environments is very, very clear. Okay, uh, so how do you envisage uh, the concept of Society 5.0 mm -hmm. and what, uh, what digital infra infrastructure are needed for a super smart society which is being accelerated for coming years in what way real sector is expected to be part of a society 5.0 society 5.0 is essentially a concept where uh, uh, a super smart human society is being created right it's all about a concept where um, it is highly human centered right meaning it's all about us all about our, our daily life all right and it's very knowledge intensive, meaning um, all of us will get access to a lot of knowledge information at any point in time, right? A real time basis. It's also very data driven, 
right? So this is really about the promise of society 5.0, right? Now, coming to the real sector, I think gone are the days where, you know, some of us may have experienced it. Uh, we know where we want to go, right? We go to a railway station, we know that line will go to the destination we will go, right? We just go there, we have no clue on the timetable of the train. We just go there, we will ask the, 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 the ticket counter where, oh, where's the next train? We get the next train and we hop on board. And to, in today's world, right, uh, we would know when the train is coming, what is the most optimized route, right? And uh, what's the estimated time that you get from the current location to your destination? Now, all this is happening through a lot of integration of information, right? I mean, uh, having data being supplied by train operator, having data maybe um, supplied by probably or rather coordinated by Google of the world to stitch multimodal transport together. You know, you can be taking car to a train station, taking a train to the destination and taking maybe another bus to somewhere else. So it's, it's really about stitching information that's kind of hosted in the cyberspace, right, to the human interactions day to day. So that's really, really how I see uh, it's actually uh, moving forward as, as we actually, um, uh, uh, as the society 5.0 is evolving. Now, I must say, different countries um, is evolving at different pace. Um, in fact, um, I was just in Japan two weeks ago, right? Um, it is so seamless that you no know, people can access to a transportation prepaid wallet on a watch, right? They can just tap the watch into the, the, the NFR um, near few um, uh, contactless uh, reader, and then they can just pass through the gantry. So these are really happening. Right? And all this require integration of technology. And uh, of course, uh, they all come back to always point the gate. Right? Imagine in the India a rail operating the service 24 by 7, uh, 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 seven days a week. Right? You can't be having these integrated systems that is delivering the society 5.0 service quality or uplifted service experience. And you have a system that is not really functional. So, so it's very important to have that infra infrastructure in place um, and, and that's how we can see envisage we can help a lot of our, our network operator, our rail operator to really uplift their service availability uh, based on the different systems that they have. Yeah. Although, although all the information are available, that need to be optimized and that need to be served. In India, we are using the same thing, yeah. but that need to be optimized. That can be better. Yeah, so we we are progressing, but you know we have we have lot of thing to catch up. So yeah. there's where you know the always on will come in. Okay. Uh, so uh, please state your uh, partnering our association with major Indian firms and organization for various project and assignment. Uh, what are the major orders on the book and significant accomplishment uh, till date? So for yeah, it's more for you know India specific. So I'll I'll take it up. So so you know we we have been as I mentioned you know, we have been a decade and a half in India and we have made a substantial progress. So we we are present as we said you know in National Stock Exchange you know our servers are keeping the transaction on 24 or 24 by 7 you know for all the transactions that happens. So for almost 15 years you know that's been happening. Similarly, we, we are there in the other financial services, you know, uh, where we are supporting the customers. So we, we cannot name few because of the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but then uh, it's always, you know, we are helping them. And, and you know, for example, uh, ATM transaction, you don't want your ATM transaction to be, you know, failing, you know. So you want that system to be up and there no confusion of, you know, where is your money actually. So. So that sort of a thing, you know, it's it's very important for the financial uh, se uh, services segment to have such a uh, solution uh, with us. So we are helping a lot of uh, such financial services customers uh, in India. Then, uh, you know, we, a big conglomerate, you know, we are very proud to be associated with a big conglomerate who are also present in the steel segment. So they have around 14 uh, steel manufacturing plant across, uh, you know, India. And uh, we are running all their mission critical applications, having uh, multiple installation across the plants. So, so steel again has a lot of uh, requirement, you know, to have the tracking to be done of where the steel production is going to the end user. So, that's where we are helping them to know, you know, what's the status of their uh, product uh, in giving them the reports of, uh, you know, what's happening. So that helps them 
to give that report to their user so that's where you know we are we are engaged with this customer so uh, one big oil refining in uh, jamnagar you know so we are doing a lot of things in here yeah, there <laughs> so 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 we have lot of installation there and you know we are helping them to have uh, you know uh, uh, zero production loss on their you know pro, you know on their on their production be incredible yeah, yeah absolutely so uh, and then uh, you know pharma so you know if if a moment of failure will cause a complete batch of drug to be you know discarded because there are a lot of compliance is also involved you know a lot of lot of uh, indian manufacturer exported to us and there are a lot of uh, compliances that are involved so even if there is a failure or you don't have data for certain time you know a small moment the complete batch would be disregarded yeah discarded so it's very important so we are helping the major uh, pharma customers across india you name any so we have installation across uh, there and when it comes to transportation uh, transportation we are making big inroads so we are getting engaged with lot of consultants in transportation who have uh, various bigger projects uh, with them so we are trying to bring the benefit of stratus always on solution which we have implemented across globe uh, and what we have implemented in india to this uh, new upcoming metros so they can take the advantage and you know have the system up and running without any downtime similarly for the dedicated freight corridor you know we have already uh, have installations you know for skeda and other mission critical packages uh, for the uh, for the uh, west and the east corridor and we are also working for the north and the south with the epcs so that you know we again support uh, this freight corridors with the you know mission critical application and keeping their systems always on what are your future plan uh, and prospect for indian market especially for uh, metros and railway sector so uh, transport infrastructure is growing in india in a big way and uh, you know when when is such a complex network you know metro is such a complex network with multiple phases multiple lines uh, so uh, you know everyone expects it to be uh, reliable you know i'll say always on and you know safe uh, operations uh, to be done so that's where you know status will come in picture so wh- when you want to have such a always on and reliable system which doesn't have any disruption and you know uh, so and the, even the customer have a good enriching experience you know without any flicker of uh, you know any of the incidents happening so you know a reliable and safe experience for the customer so that's where we will come in picture you know we will we we can support this always on for the mission critical application that are coming up in uh, in the transportation segment uh, it may be as uh, critical operations like the you know the control platform doors which are you know from the safety point of very important okay the train signaling we know with the recent incidents how important it is you know so so that always on will ensure that the train signaling works without any disruption so that is uh, important from the safety point of uh, view we have already uh, you know engaged with uh, as i already mentioned with uh, bigger consultants and we are getting into lot of uh, metro and uh, uh, the dedicated freight corridor uh, uh, you know projects we uh, have already uh, implemented a few and we are trying to b- bring on those benefits which we have implemented in india and abroad you know so for example the uh korea complete subway and uh, like subway is a metro that they call in you know subway and the uh, uh uh the uh, the mini subway you know is working the train signaling and the control platform doors and other critical applications are working on uh, stratus uh, solutions similarly in singapore the complete skeda system is on uh, uh stratus uh, always on reliable solution so uh, that is what we want to replicate we are there already present but we want to make a big inroads in terms of you know helping the indian infrastructure to have a reliable and safe uh, solution so uh, so see uh, in in india there is a lots of uh, infra project is going on especially in transport sector such as mumbai ahmedabad high speed rail project and we have a uh, we have approx uh, uh, metro project in approx 25 cities across the country we have a 
DFCCIL, like Dedicated Fire Corridor, yeah. right? So, how the start uh, help us help us out to you know being a uh, being a uh, modernized provide uh, a good service to the our people that in fact uh, will like talk about the 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 movement of the you know freight or the passenger. So like how like uh, starts can help us out. Sure. Yeah. Why why don't I take this up, uh, Monish? So so definitely. Before these projects or investment into the infrastructure is happening, uh, a lot of digital systems are being implemented as well. The modern digital systems, right? They include SCADA systems, they include uh, advanced signaling uh, control systems, they involve, and it really involve a lot of different systems. So, so Stratus is definitely in the right spot, right? First of all, to help um, make sure the environment, the compute environment that these systems are sitting on is always on. So that's one, right? And secondly, we also, based on our experience that we have outside India, right? We can also bring in our experience where, you know, uh, even bring in the right partner to some of the Indian operators here or even EPCs or consultant to assess whether some of the best practices outside India can be replicated here, right? So a good example is a, a session that I have yesterday with an uh, uh, with, uh, operator yesterday, right? And the challenge he was sharing with me is one of the biggest challenges he had is the integration of siloed systems, yeah. providing end-to-end uh, -end information rather than having a information of certain systems standing by itself, right? So that's a good example on you know, some of the things that we can help by bringing in the you know, expertise outside India to come into India. So, so this is just some of the uh, value we can add to the India uh, rail market. Yeah. Uh, can we can we see a little bit about uh, metro rail management? Sure, yeah. So um, I would say, you know, um, definitely India government is investing a lot into the uh, railway infrastructure in this case, right? Um, building the right systems at the very beginning is important, right? Um, sustainability is one. Uh, of course, from Strata's perspective, we also believe sustainability includes scalability. How you expand your line to serve more commuters, uh, daily the riders that you know serving different part of the countries to east the traffic congestion that uh, India is actually facing today, right? So building it right at the very beginning is important. Uh, this includes considering um, systems like Stratus, right? Uh, where we can always ensure that the system is always on, right? Very, very critical uh, as we build it right, because somewhere down the road, if it's not designed right and built right at the very beginning, um, stopping a real service for system upgrade, for system improvement, I think there's something that nobody would want to imagine happening in the production uh, running uh, railway or, uh, lines for that is serving the public already. So that will be my message. I hope you know, our session here has helped the readers uh, understand a little bit more about why um, uh, critical systems are important, um, how uh, critical systems can value add into the rail sector. Yeah, so yeah, that, that would be my message to the readers of uh, Metro Rail. So, Monish, you may want to top up, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, just want to add, you know, firstly, uh, Metro News has, uh, Metro Rail News News has been giving good insights, you know, of uh, what's happening across, uh, uh, you know, the transportation segment. So, uh, you know, we, we also, you know, are here again, you know, to help uh, tell our viewers that how status can help, you know, through Metro News, you know, we are, we, we are, we are very... We appreciate, you know, you giving us a chance uh, to help our readers to know what we can bring on, uh, uh, you know, on the transportation segment. So in India, we have already established, we have a good team, we have a good setup that is there and we have been operating for last uh, 15, 20 years in India. So we, uh, we have a channel network also been set up and, uh, you know, that's where we want to now, uh, you know, take it up further. Uh, and and you know uh, uh, we want to build our uh, uh, you know more on the transportation uh, segment where we can support our customers like what we have done you know across globe or in India so to have uh, the always on system and reliable system in place which will you know make uh, uh, you know the life of the operator as well as the consumer uh, you know safe and uh, you know uh, they have a good enriching experience. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us and uh, such insightful knowledge sharing with our viewers. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.